Okay. So we'll discuss today uh, support vector machine uh, known as SVM in short. So that is another uh, classification technique or another classifier. Uh, in some situations uh, where we uh, can't use actually um, artificial neural network, some problems are there. Some DMX are there. Already I've discussed a little bit earlier uh, this problem. In this situation, artificial neural network is not suitable. Um, and in those situations, we should actually go for SVM. So again, I will tell you today the situations. Uh, earlier also I mentioned. And now the thing is, uh, is there any question on auto encoder? Anybody? Do you have any question on auto encoder that you have discussed in the last class? Is there any doubt? Then please, you can please ask me. Do you have any question, anybody, on auto encoder? How it works? There's one case study I have told you that one uh, digit six actually um, uh, we are taking in the um, uh, input layer. That means uh, we are feeding the features of one digit six in the to the input layer and uh, using auto encoder. Similar one sample of six will be generated. That is one digit. That is one printed. Uh, one text is there. That is one digit. So that is one situation and there we have seen that uh, each pixel uh, is each pixel's intensity um, um, that means the raw intensity value uh, will be given as one feature to the input layer okay uh, and the thing is uh, if we give uh, directly the raw intensity value then uh, obviously uh, we cannot achieve the purpose uh, we cannot achieve the target uh, we have to normalize those feature values that you have seen we have to bring it within certain range, 0 to 1 or minus 1 to plus 1 like that. So that is one situation, okay, where actually we are taking one image, natural scene image, where each pixel having some intensity value, okay, any color image, any natural scene image. Okay, but uh, other situations also I told you, mentioned you that uh, in different types of researches, actually we require autoencoder or um, GAN, generative adversarial network to degenerate more number of samples from the existing samples, okay, of, of any certain pattern. Of any particular pattern. Now the thing is, in that situation, uh, that means in different other situations, like where natural scene image you are not giving, say some other type of data is there in some other form, in some other representation, not in uh, in the form of colored image or natural scene image, not in the form of JPG image. Okay, so like one example I have told you mentioned that day, that is uh, for signature verification related research work, we have to collect signature. Uh, every uh, different people's signature okay, on, on a piece of paper and then that we scan it uh, to the so computer then obviously it becomes one image but that is actually obviously its extension is also jpg image but it is not like the natural scene image color image uh, it does not uh, have the um, that, the, that means the different color intensity levels at different pixels rather than it will come in the black and white form okay the writing portion that is a signature portion uh, will be actually represented in, uh, using black pixel and background portion will be represented using white pixel. So in that situation, um, obviously the color intensity will not get. Okay, in that position, uh, in that situation, you have to uh, use some, uh, that means you have to modify the concept a little bit so that um, uh, the similar uh, sample, similar um, types of signature samples can be generated for any person. Okay, that's it. In mean, this, a different research areas are there. Okay, mm -hmm. so is there any question um, on that um, auto encoder? Be yes, sir. Good question, nahi, auto encoder. No, sir. Yes. Ajit Pandey. Yes, sir. Understood the auto encoder. Yes, sir.
So say if it is uh, some signature sample, say, okay, like that uh, sample that you've seen in the last class one, uh, digit six. So say some signature sample is there and it has been collected, it has been collected in the form of image, okay, uh, written on piece of, collected on a piece of paper and then it has been scanned, it has been converted to one certain image. So in that case, uh, uh, in that uh, in that type of situation, if you want to regenerate similar signature sample, again, okay, using autoencoder, uh, the concept that we have discussed in the last class, we need to work, that is, uh, say, each and every uh, pixel intensity, um, each and every coordinate pixel intensity, we will normalize within a certain range, 0 to 1, or minus 1 to plus 1, or the, then, then we'll give it to the input layer. Uh, and uh, accordingly, uh, we'll get it uh, almost similar sample from the output layer, from the autoencoder. That concept will work uh, there, there also. Or any modification you have to do. I asked you that, Dana, please uh, think over this in different situations where you can regenerate uh, similar types of samples <clears throat> of any pattern so that in that way we can uh, generate more number of samples of, of each pattern class. So that is the main purpose or target of using auto encoder, where we can't actually collect from the real life so many samples due to some constraints. Okay, so in that uh, signature related say research work, uh, these uh, similar concept will work. The way actually we have um, regenerated uh, one uh, another um, new sample of uh, digit six that we have seen in the last class. Would you doubt me? Sabko sawn mein hai, auto encoder mein. How shall you tell? Yes, sir. Samajh mein aaya, sir. So, isko bol raha signature wala jo hum bol raha hai, signature wala sample hai mandla. Usko regenerate karne ke liye bolo. Sir, signature mein bhi wo kam karega, sir. Kam karega. Jo jaa pe tumara jaa pe tumara black pixel hai, wo wape to intensity jo value hai, wo to tumara black related tumara jo intensity value level hai, waisa rahega. Okay. Uh, zero because, hmm. Black intensity kya hai? Black intensity sir zero to twenty two fifty five ke beech mein rahega. Magar agar maan lijiye grey rahega, to uska kuch intensity uska just half ke round hoga. Yeah, ham ham usko binary kar denge, theek hai? Only black and white pixel will be there. Background white and uh, the signature portion jaa jaa se pass hua. All those portions will be black and all those pixels will be black. So binary cut them, black and white, only binary, black and white. Okay, in this case, black, koi bhi pixel ka color agar black hai, matlab intensity black hai, uska value kitna hai? 255, sir. Or white ka zero? Zero. Binary image mein 255 hai ga? Sir, black ka zero aata hai, or white ka one. Hmm, so binary image mein 255 aata hai? हम बाइनरी में बोल रहे हैं तो बाइनरी बाइनरी में में कितना हम के साथ इको हो रहा है इको हो रहा है इको हो रहा है इको हो रहा है इन केस ऑफ बाइनरी इमेज दैट डू आल्सो हैव मेंशंड क्लास नहीं करते प्रॉपर कंसंट्रेट नहीं करते क्लास में दैट डू आल्सो हैव मेंशंड देयर आर डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ इमेजेस Gray level image, color image, and binary image. Okay, and in gray level color image, again, different configurations are there. 8 bit color image, 8 bit gray level image, 16 bit gray level image, 16 bit color image. So, if it is 8 bit, then each pixel intensity is represented through 8 different bits. And bit, everybody knows 0 or 1. So, 0 or 1 will write in different forms in the form of 8 bit. So, 2 to the power 8, how many binary numbers we can generate? 256. That means 0 to 255. So, so in that case, each and every binary number from 0 to 255 will give obviously different decimal values, different intensity values. So 256 different shades will be possible for the black. It, if it is gray level image. Okay. Similarly for color image for R, G and B, for R 8 bit, for G 8 bit, for B 8 bit, B for blue. So 8, 8, 8, 24. 24 bits are required to represent one one particular pixel intensity level intensity value okay 
but if it is binary image that they also have mentioned okay binary image means the two by means two binary image so that means only uh, two intensity levels will be there that's why binary so two intensity level when it is possible when each pixel intensity we are representing using either zero or one okay if we use two bits to represent each pixel intensity then two to the power two four different levels are possible but here we are telling binary image so binary means two only two intensity levels are allowed okay only two intensity intensity levels when we are actually talking about obviously it means black and white nothing else so only using one bit we should be able to represent each pixel intensity okay so either we will put zero or one say first pixel zero zero we will put intensity level either zero or one second pixel zero one because pixel image is nothing but one matrix okay so one two d array so first pixel location is zero zero okay second pixel location zero one that means in the same row first row will complete then we will move to the second row third um, location of the matrix or third pixel um, location is zero two in this way so these are the locations of the pixels now in each of these location uh, pixel location uh, intensity level will be either black or white that means uh, all, all, everything we have to represent to binary so binary means some binary number we have to write now since it is binary image okay so obviously uh, one bit we have to use not more than one so either zero or one so zero zero is the first pixel location intensity level will be either zero or one okay um, second pixel location zero one there also intensity level will be either zero or one which one is suitable you have to put it okay in this way so zero will represent what zero will represent black or white zero will represent black or white black black and one will represent white okay so 255 kaise aayega crucial yahan pe binary image pe 255 kaise aayega to samajh mein nahi aata bilkul common sense nahi hai ha nahi sir hum sune nahi the binary format is liya बाइनरी फॉर्मेट तो हम बोल रहे हैं ब्लैक एंड व्हाइट हम तो तभी बोल रहे हैं हम उसको बाइनरी में कन्वर्ट करेंगे जस्ट सिग्नेचर व्हाट विल टेक एंड ऑटोमेटिकली इट बाइनरी में आएगा क्योंकि इफ वी टेक वन सिग्नेचर ऑन अ व्हाइट पेपर यूजिंग से योर ब्लैक इंक ठीक है तो ऑटोमेटिकली जो इंक पोर्शन है ब्लैक होगा और पीछे जो बैकग्राउंड में पेपर है व्हाइट होगा बट इफ यू आर यूजिंग से ब्लू इंक ब्लू इंक ठीक है एंड इफ यू स्कैन इट If you scan it and if you do uh, color scanning, then the signature portion will be in the blue. Obviously, blue col uh, color, so your uh, pixel intensity will be uh, level will be blue in that case uh, for those portion where signature uh, portions are there and uh, background will be white. But then we'll convert it into black and white binary image. Okay, so then only black or white will be there. So now uh, either zero or one will be there. Okay, so um, these values now will give to auto encoder. and uh, is it possible in the same way to regenerate that uh, similar type of signature sample in the output layer that is my question is it possible the way we have explained that example in the last class possible hai na yes sir Hmm. Kaushal, what is your idea? Yes, sir. It is possible. Hmm. We are bringing actually we are bringing it into only two values, zero and one intensity values. Okay. So earlier actually it was a color image. So color image or gray level image, whatever be. So two fifty six different intensity values were the intensity levels. That means two fifty six different intensity values were there. Zero to five, we had actually normalized it within zero to one. But here only two values are coming, zero and one. So no problem. We will feed those original values, and uh, accordingly, if we can, um, that means adapt the weightages. Okay, that means um, the weightages values in the hidden layer nodes. Uh, that means from the um, uh, hidden layer uh, to the output layer connection. Okay, on those each and every arc, the weightages values. If we can actually adapt, if we can modify in such a way that, okay, the similar. Uh, intensity level for each and every pixel can be produced in the output layer in each and every node at each and every node okay so almost similar sample we can regenerate okay so now 
Uh, let us start the support vector machine. So support vector machine, first of all, let me actually tell you the situation. So earlier also I have told a little bit in the initial classes. Support vector machine actually was uh, discovered by Bapnik in 1992. Okay. Uh, you can see on the screen, I have mentioned the name uh, of that inventor Bapnik, B-A-P-N-I-K, in 1992. Uh, because the um, artificial neural network, actually the community, uh, that first of all, uh, the, let me actually tell you that uh, why support vector machine actually was invented. Because the artificial neural network, the main problem in ANN or conventional artificial neural network or um, that means MLP, whatever we tell, because uh, whenever it becomes network, okay, so so many hidden layers come, uh, so many hidden layers are coming, so naturally it is uh, called as MLP, multi-layer perceptor. Whenever network is there, one neuron is connected, one two layer neuron is connected with another, that one is connected with another, naturally one network is generated. So the main problem, I, I have mentioned earlier also, this demerit that it takes lot, that means um, uh, the training time is too high, okay. Okay, huge amount of time is required to train the artificial neural network. That is the problem, five to six or some time, that depends on the actually um, research problem. But in most of the research problems, okay, my data set, uh, that means training set uh, size will be high actually because we need to collect so many samples for each pattern. And generally in our real life research areas, uh, we don't actually um, follow um, to, um, two class or three class problem. So, so many classes generally it remains, okay, in our research problems, in most of our research problems, okay, not all, but most of our research problems, so many classes are there, uh, we consider, so it is multi-class classification problem in most of our researches and in, uh, for each and every uh, pattern or class, we generally take so many samples. So the problem is what? The training set size is because uh, training set size becomes too high. And uh, as and when training set size actually is becoming uh, too high, training sets, uh, if the training set uh, size gradually increases, okay, the training time of the artificial neural network classifier, okay, gradually increases. And gradual increases means not uh, like that, that within half an hour or one hour we can complete. Sometimes even it can take five to six hours. So that is the actual main problem. So that's why actually machine learning research communities were thinking uh, in, the, uh, in the late uh, 80s or from the mid 80s to actually um, uh, propose some new classifier, uh, new classification model, some new classifier, some new classification technique. And uh, they come up with the uh, support vector machine in 1992. And uh, after its inception, after its inception, it became very popular because uh, if the training set size is not, uh, that means too much high, training set uh, size is reasonable, reasonable size, training set size is reasonable, then using SVM, we can complete the training within uh, three to four minutes. Okay, within three to four minutes. Okay, it is actually very, uh, that means uh, what you can say that within a very short amount of time, it can uh, complete the training within three to four minutes. Okay, because uh, we have also actually done in our uh, research problem, support vector machine we have used. Within three to four minutes, actually the, the training gets over, the training phase gets over, learning, learning of the uh, machine gets over, learning of the classifier gets over. Okay. But if the training set size is very high, sometimes it takes a little bit more time, South Vector Machine, but not like ANN, that five to six hours, okay. Uh, but, uh, and sometimes it happens that if the training set size is uh, too high, uh, then SVM uh, does not give uh, very good accuracy. That is one demerit. That is one demerit, okay. Um, but the um, advantage is that uh, if the training set size is reasonable, uh, then uh, SVM gives good accuracy also. Not only that, the training phase, learning phase, we can complete within three to four minutes. So very actually efficient SVM. So that's why uh, uh, after its inception from the 90s, it became very popular. And SVM actually till five to six years ago also, we used to use in our research areas. Okay, now since, uh, since in last seven to eight years actually, uh, deep learning uh, has come into the picture and uh, the demand was more to use deep learning, to explore the deep learning concept, okay, to see the performance um, of your system for different types of researches. Uh, that's why actually uh, for last uh, seven to eight years actually it went back a little bit SVM, okay. In the backbench actually it has been sent a little bit in the backbench. But SVM was very popular, at, um, that means uh, before five to six years also, and due to this reason, 
uh, that means uh, when uh, deep learning was not there in the uh, picture okay um, due to this reason it gives good accuracy also not only that uh, it actually um, completes the training time training time completion is actually very um, what we can say that very um, uh, the main factor for svm becoming the for getting the popularity of svm that is a, that was the main factor that is the training time okay training uh, can be completed within 3 to 4 minutes maximum okay so that was the main factor actually that due to which svm has become popular the training time is actually too less okay training time is very less as well as it gives good accuracy so it is not like that the training time it is taking uh, very small uh, and it is not giving good accuracy like artificial neural network that is also not the case it in most of the research areas it gives good accuracy also okay uh, even better than artificial neural network in some research areas and uh, along with that it takes very small training time so obviously that's why svm has become popular naturally okay so th this was actually background of the or history of the svm now the from the technical uh, um, uh, actually side if we discuss uh, that uh, so the, um, these are the two actually parameters i told that is the um, training time is too less and accuracy it gives uh, better accuracy than uh, artificial neural network so these are the two factors due to which it has become popular now from the technical point of view if we, if we discuss there is another factor that is the perceptron or um, mlp whatever we have seen that is artificial neural network okay if it is truly a neuron we uh, um, term it as perceptron uh, um, and um, if there are so many hidden layers we call it as mlp multilayer perceptron so whatever be that means the artificial neural network has one actually big problem that apart from training time training time is also actually a big problem it takes so much training time apart from that another technical uh, actually glitch is also there another technical glitch is also there that is if the um, uh, training samples okay are linearly separable if the training samples are linearly separable like here you can see okay on the screen or we, we have seen so many examples earlier okay if the training samples are linearly separable okay then only actually uh, artificial neural network or mlp works that means that training samples or data samples that are present if we cannot actually separate them uh, into the proper classes using a straight line decision boundary using a straight line decision boundary that means a non linear that means linear decision boundary is not possible non linear decision boundary is required okay so in that situation uh, obviously your um, artificial neural network mlp cannot work so that is the main drawback okay so what what you have to do uh, using some technique we have to convert the, those data samples uh in, into um, into some different way that that means the distribution will be such the distribution will be modified so that on linear decision boundary can be drawn okay so this thing cannot be actually done using artificial neural network so this thing can be achieved using sv that we'll see here i will tell you in details i will describe it uh, when we'll discuss a kernel concept that means say um, two class problem is there and uh, several samples are there training samples are there okay from two classes and they are distributed in such a way that straight line decision boundary is not possible at all. so we have to make non linear decision boundary okay so in that case using svm what we do we use the kernel function and using kernel function uh, we actually include some new feature values but those new feature values actually are derived from the existing feature values that is the main actually uh, what you can say the main um, theme here main theme here in the svm we are not taking a new feature we are uh, including or we are uh, actually deriving some new feature values from the existing features okay and after that we will see if we um, include those extra some features that the dimensionality of the feature vector we are increasing then automatically earlier linear decision boundary was not possible uh, uh, that means uh, straight line decision boundary was not possible to draw now we will be able to construct a linear decision boundary okay and that is uh, achieved using kernel function of svm that is actually main theme of svm in svm kernel uh, kernel concept is there so this kernel concept actually has made svm so much popular okay uh, one factor that i that i have already mentioned that training time is too less and second factor is this kernel function this kernel concept was not there in artificial neural network also or in base classifier also whatever classifiers we have seen till now okay 
in none of the classifiers kernel concept is there no kernel function concept is there okay like kernel is there in operating system all of you know kernel similarly here some kernel functions are used in svm so using those uh, kernel, different kernel functions are there polynomial kernel function radial basis so okay, different functions are there all are, all are actually different mathematical functions using those kernel functions what we can achieve we can uh, transform the current representation of the data uh, data set that means current representation of the training samples in such a way that uh, right now if it is not possible to construct the linear decision boundary in future it will be possible to construct the linear decision boundary by including some new feature values okay uh, which are derived from the existing features so we are not actually including any new feature we are including some new feature values Uh, which will be derived from the existing feature existing features okay that means some mathematics uh, mathematical actually approach is followed uh, using that from the existing features we actually derive some new feature values and those feature values we put in the feature vector so feature vector dimensionality dimensionality gets increased okay feature feature vector dimensionality uh, will be increased and number of actually feature values are coming more and using using those uh, um, that will increase dimensional feature vector if we now again distribute those uh, training samples we will see now it will be possible to construct the linear decision boundary so that is actually main uh, wh what you can say that uh, uh, mane main efficiency or we can say the main uh, theme of support vector machine due to which it has become uh, very much popular that is the kernel concept kernel function concept okay uh, the main actually uh, the theme or main actually we can say the heart of the svm is the kernel kernel concept and due to which we can convert any existing data set into higher dimensional data set why we are converting because after converting to higher dimensional data set it will be possible to make them linearly separate okay that means uh, if there if it is two class problem then all the samples from two classes will be uh, can be separated uh, using some linear decision not linearly separable means linear decision but we can do so this is the main actually advantage of svm Uh, yeah, this kernel concept, which is not possible in MLP, multi-multi layer perceptron or artificial neural network. Okay, uh, if uh, they are actually the uh, data samples or training samples are distributed in such a way that linear or straight line decision boundary is not possible, you have to make non-linear decision boundary. Then MLP will fail. Then MLP MLP will fail. Okay, ML MLP or perceptron cannot work. Okay, so that is the thing. so um, this is the main thing so that we will see okay uh, one by one we will see all those concepts so first of all let me show you uh, an another slide then i will discuss this slide why it is called support vector we'll see okay why it is called, why the name has been given in such a support vector which vectors actually are giving as a support that we'll see but before that so i'm showing you three different situations so it is two class problem okay say um, one class is addition class so some samples we are drawing from ad for addition class
<coughs> another class is circle plus something okay so we are drawing some samples of circle plus <coughs> Okay. Now see, uh, so these are two class problem. Okay, some few samples you have taken from class class, another samples, a few other samples you have taken from circle class. So one class is a class class addition, another class is circle class. Okay, uh, now um, these samples, the way they are distributed or uh, they are placed, obviously they are linearly separate. You can easily see we can construct a uh, straight line division boundary here. Okay, we can construct a straight line division boundary here. So they are linearly separable. Whenever straight line division boundary is possible, okay, to um, separate um, different samples, okay, of different classes to their respective region uh, correctly, uh, then we say those uh, those samples, okay, belonging to different classes, they are linearly separable. When linear division boundary is possible, correct linear division boundary, obviously, correct linear division boundary means on one side all the samples should be from class one, on another side of the division boundary. All the samples should be from class two. That that it means correct. Okay, uh, we should not draw blindly that we are drawing a straight line division boundary. But um, that means um, on the region of uh, class two, a few samples are coming from class one also. Obviously, that is not correct. Okay, correct means on one side every sample should be from class one. On another side, every sample should be from class two. We have discussed it earlier also. So now see. Linearly separable. That means these samples are linearly separable. We can we can construct a correct division boundary. But these division boundaries can be drawn in different way. You see, this is one way. Okay, this is one way. Okay, this is one way. Now I am showing you another way. This is one way. So this is another division boundary. Okay, both are correct. Both are correct because on one side you see all the samples belonging to plus class, and on another side all the samples belonging to circle class. Both are correct. Okay, both are correct. Another one I am showing you. Another situation. That means this division boundary now it can pass through different regions. All are correct. Okay, so this is the third one. So among these three, which one actually? Uh, you can see from your uh, naked eye that uh, that is the best uh, position through which linear division boundary has passed. Which one? Figure one, figure two, or figure three? Which one? Which one is the best one? This is figure one. Huh? Figure three, sir. Figure three. Acha. Other other people, you tell. Figure Which one is the best? Do you think? Do you think? Figure. All are correct actually. Because on one side coming from class one, class class, another side coming from um, uh, class two, that is zero class. Okay. In all, all the three situations. But which one is best actually? From the. Sir, figure three. अच्छा तुम्हारे इतना आवाज क्यों आता है बैकग्राउंड से अच्छा व्हाई लॉट्स ऑफ नॉइजेस आर कमिंग फ्रॉम योर बैकग्राउंड व्हेन एवर यू टॉक आई हैव सीन लॉट्स ऑफ नॉइजेस आर कमिंग सर ओ फैन का अच्छा ठीक है ओके म्यूट म्यूट फिगर 3 ना ठीक है ओके 
so um, uh, that means from our normal uh, concept common sense or normal perception or what we can say from our naked eye when we will see uh, whenever uh, that means uh, something we see from our naked eye uh, actually uh, from our that means normal uh, functioning of the brain or from our common sense actually we say that uh, this particular things looks good okay we say from this whenever we see something and this particular thing doesn't look good we see so how actually we decide it based on that is the common sense that the based on which actually our brain performs and brain gives us a signal that these uh, things look uh, this, this particular looks and uh, the, this one another one or another another picture or another some say picture sculpture okay doesn't look, look good so based on that actually uh, we can say here out of these three okay obviously third one is the best third one is best so what you have told that is correct third one third one is the best why third one is the best because we can see here the decision boundary has passed exactly to the middle to the middle of okay the region 1 and region 2 but whereas in uh, first figure what we are seeing that it is almost it is almost touching okay uh one or two samples okay of plus class and in the second one we are seeing it is almost touching uh, one or two samples uh, of, of circle class that means one sample of circle class here in figure 2 almost lying on the boundary and here one sample from plus class almost lying on the boundary almost exactly not lying but almost lying on the boundary very very near very close okay plus class sample is here and boundary is passing through here so it is exactly not lying on the boundary but almost uh, lying on the boundary that means it is very near very close from the boundary similarly here this uh, sample from circle class class 2 it is very close from the boundary but here you can see it is very ideal so from a normal actually concept or from a common sense from a normal actually looking the way actually uh, human beings uh, see anything and tell yes it is very good looking is very good from that concept you can say that third one is actually the best out of these three because region boundary has passed exactly through the middle okay middle of region 1 and region 2 this is the region 1 of class 1 this is the region 2 of class 2 so it has not touched okay um, any of the sample of class class or circle class that means uh, no sample is there from class 1 or class 2 which is lying almost on the boundary so this is the thing so now the thing is from here why actually i have shown you these uh, situations these three different situations uh, actually uh, by seeing these three different situations we can say the third one is the best now third one is the best so um, what actually wh why it is best first of all it is by passing exactly to the middle of the region 1 and region 2 and there is certain no man's land Uh, on both the sides and uh, no man's land is here also in figure one and figure two also no man's land is there that is not the case but here no man's land is there on both the side of the division boundary but in figure two no man's land is there on one side of the division boundary which is in division one and in figure one no man's land is there on another side of the division boundary which is region two but in figure three there are no man's land and almost equal amount of no man's land okay almost equal amount of no man's land on both the sides of the division boundary okay that means in region 1 also the amount of no man's land is available exactly same almost same amount of no man's land is available in the region 2 also okay so that's why actually we are telling that exactly it is passing through the middle of region 1 and region 2 so from here actually the concept of support vector machine will arise okay that uh, uh, on both the sides of division boundary there should be a reasonable amount of no man's land now the question is how much actually um, that means what will be the length of the no man's land on both the sides of the division boundary that means how much space uh, we should actually uh, keep as no man's land on both the side no man's land means not a single sample should be placed okay within that uh, area within within that portion that's why it is called no man's land and how much space we should keep as no man's land on both the sides of the division boundary okay or we can say that what is the length of this uh, no man's land on both the side of the division boundary so from this concept actually support vector machine concept is arise okay and that we will see now uh, through the mathematical derivation we will see it okay like here you can see on both the sides of the division boundary some no man some amount of no man's land will be there that means not a single uh, um, training sample uh, either from class 1 or class 2 should be placed there 
entirely it should be empty space. Okay, that's why it is no man's land. And uh, the um, length of the no man's land, or uh, what we can say, that the length of the portion, uh, why, um, the length of the portion that we have kept as a blank. Okay, that we have kept as blank. That means we have not placed uh, in a single sample, single training sample there. Okay, that length is known as margin. That length is known as margin. So the main actually um, concept in support vector machine is we have to derive the length of the margin. So from this actually uh, diagram you can see from this figure. Uh, here actually this is the margin. Margin has been denoted by m, and here also m. That means the, in the support vector machine the concept is exactly same amount of no man's land should be placed on both the sides of the division boundary. Okay. It is not like that. Um, on one side we are pressing say one centimeter, and on another side we are pressing 0.5 centimeter. It should not be like that. Same, exactly equal, equal, equal amount of no man's land should be placed on both the sides of the division boundary. Okay, and the length of this uh, particular portion, that means the no man's land, that means from the division boundary, okay, to the portion where the no man's land is getting over, okay, the length of the portion is known as margin. So it is denoted by m. So here you can see on both the sides actually uh, we have uh, kept equal equal amount of no man's land, uh, and that's why here also m, here also m. From here to here arrow, uh, this arrow we are denoting by m. From here to here arrow we are denoting by m. So this is the division boundary. This is the main division boundary. Okay, here you can see uh, it is mentioned by this arrow decision boundary. And this is the class boundary of plus class, and this is the class boundary of circle class. Okay, now what is the class boundary? That means class boundary is that uh, boundary where no man's land is getting over. That means after that, after the class boundary, some samples will be placed. So some some samples are available from class one, similarly for class two. Okay, but uh, from the decision boundary to the class boundary, in both the sides, not a single sample should be placed. It, it should be kept as blank. Okay, totally blank space. That's why no man's land. So um, that boundary uh, where no man's land is getting over, okay, of uh, plus class, that is the plus class boundary, and that boundary where the no man's land is getting over of circle class, that is called uh, circle class boundary. Okay. Now the thing is here we have drawn in this way. Now the main challenge is here we have to actually determine. So we'll solve some numericals also on this. That in this way, if some samples are given distributed, uh, you find out the margin size. Okay, what is margin? Margin means that the distance from the decision boundary to this class boundary. This distance is called margin. Okay, you should actually use the term distance. Length is not actually the correct term here. Okay, because it is a distance. Because here you can see actually it is actually not normal distance. It is a, I mean, what we can say it is not conventional distance. It is actually like normal distance. That uh, mathematical normal concept that we have seen earlier also. In linear discriminant function, the normal distance from the origin that we have seen earlier, that is minus w zero by that uh, your um, norm of weight vector w, like that normal distance. Normal means mathematical normal, okay? Not in in, in our conventional sense normal. So here uh, that uh, term distance we should use rather than length. Okay, length is not actually appropriate term here. It is the distance. So the distance from the division boundary to the class boundary, it is called the margin. Okay, you can uh, note down in your copy that uh, distance from the class boundary, distance from the decision boundary, or hyperplane. Okay, we know that uh, if it is greater than three dimension, then we call it hyperplane. If it is three dimensional features are more than three dimensional, we call it hyperplane. Okay, if it is uh, two dimensional, we call it straight line. Okay, and one D plane, so we know it. So um, sometimes instead of decision boundary, we use that term hyperplane also. So the distance uh, from the Mm, decision boundary hyperplane. Okay, from the decision boundary to the uh, plus class boundary as well as the circle class boundary is known as the margin. Okay, it is known as the margin. Okay. <coughs> so if it is if it is if it is actually two dimensional, it will uh, give rise to one rectangle. Easily you can see that means the margin we are taking. Uh, of equal uh, equal value on both the sides. So if we connect this, okay, uh, with the decision boundary, we will get a rectangle. So if it is two dimensional, we are getting a rectangle. But if it is a three dimensional, we will get a cylinder. We will get a cylinder, and the um, radius of the cylinder is nothing but the margin. 
Okay, so in this also we can actually define the margin. Okay. So you uh, note down in your um, copy. Write down. We put we put a no man's land. Here it is mentioned here no man's land on the screen you can see. Okay, here no man's land, no man's land. Okay, no man's land. That means on both the sides of the division boundary, some space we have to keep as a blank. Okay, not a single sample should be placed. That's why it is called no man's land. So we put write down in, in the support vector machine. In the support vector machine. We put a no man's land, we put a no man's land, we put a no man's land around the decision boundary, around the decision boundary on both the sides, around the decision boundary on both the sides, we put a no man's land around the decision boundary on both the sides, so that any point, so that any point, point means any sample, any sample, any training sample. Okay, we are telling a point because we have plotted it, it is looking like a point, but it is actually, uh, practically it is a training sample. So that any point that lies within that region, so that any point that lies within that region, that means within the region means in the no man's land, is declared to be too close to the decision boundary, is declared to be too close to the decision boundary, is declared to be too close to the decision boundary, Okay, is declared to be too close to the decision boundary to be accurately classified. To be accurately classified. To be accurately classified. Full stop. Okay, again I am repeating it. In support vector machine, we put a no man's land. We put a no man's land around the decision boundary, around the decision boundary on both the sides. Remember, on both the sides, not in only one side, in both the sides. As I mentioned, on both the sides, you have to put no man's land. Not only that, equal uh, equal amount of uh, no man's land on both the sides. That means the distance from the region boundary to the uh, no man's land is getting over. That means that class boundary, that distance should be equal in both the sides. Okay. So you put a no man's land around the region boundary on both the sides. So that any point that lies within that region, so that any point that lies within that region, is declared to be too close, is declared to be too close to the to the decision boundary, to the decision boundary to be accurately classified, to be accurately classified. Okay. Now write down. This region is symmetric about the line, uh, about, about the decision boundary, line means decision boundary. This region is symmetric about the decision boundary. This region is symmetric about the decision boundary. This region is symmetric about the decision boundary okay this region is symmetric about the decision boundary so that it forms a cylinder so that it forms a cylinder so this region is symmetric about the decision boundary what is the meaning of this as i mentioned that means on both the sides no man land amount should be exactly equal that's why symmetry that's why it is called this region is symmetric this region means no man's land this region means no man's land it is symmetric about the decision boundary Okay, why symmetric? As I have already, already mentioned, when the no man's land amount on both the sides must be exactly equal. Like here you can see, here also we have mentioned M, here also we have mentioned M. That means if M contains a certain value, obviously that means in both the sides equal amount of no man's land we are indicating here. Okay, so that's why this region, this region means no man's land. It is always symmetric about the division boundary. Okay. So this region, the region means no man's land, is symmetric about the region boundary so that it forms a cylinder. So that it forms a cylinder, as I mentioned already. So that it forms a cylinder about the division boundary, about the division boundary. That means around the division boundary, actually it is forming cylinder. This region, no man's land on both the sides, which are equal uh, in amount. Okay, uh, that means uh, equal uh, value of the margin on both the sides. Okay. It forms a cylinder uh, along with your decision boundary. Okay, in case of 3D. So write down so that it forms a cylinder, so that it forms a cylinder above the decision boundary, above the decision boundary in 3D, in 3D. Okay, 
about the region boundary means around the region boundary okay by constituting the region boundary this region moments land on both the sides it is forming a cylinder okay in case of 3d in case of 3d and the rectangle and the rectangle and the rectangle in case of 2d and the rectangle in case of 2d and the rectangle in case of 2d and the hypercylinder in higher dimensions and the hypercylinder in higher dimensions and the hypercylinder in higher dimensions okay now write down next statement now one question is that how large how large could we make how large could we make the radius of this cylinder how large could we make the radius of this cylinder how large could we make the radius of this cylinder until we started to put points into a nomen's land until we started to put points into a nomen's land okay how large could we make the radius of this cylinder how large could we make the radius of this cylinder until we started to until we started to put points until we started to put points into a nomen's land into a nomen's land where we don't know which class they are from where we don't know which class they are from okay how large could we make the radius of this cylinder until we started to put points into a nomen's land where we don't know which class they are from where we don't know which class they are from this largest radius is known as the margin level by m okay you can see uh, in this diagram level by m this largest radius is known as known as the margin this largest radius is known as the margin this largest radius is known as the margin level by m level by m okay so what is the meaning of this question that how large could we make the radius of this cylinder okay until we can put some point in the nomen's land where we don't know which class they are from so that means what like here in the diagram you can see that we have actually um, given some uh, that means one uh, double headed arrow okay from division boundary to this class boundary plus uh, plus class and another double headed arrow okay uh, that is your uh, from the division boundary to the uh, class boundary of the circle class okay now the question is actually why you have given up to this question okay that means this class boundary why you have drawn here it could have been drawn here also here also okay or it could have been drawn before that also similarly this class boundary circle class boundary why you have drawn here why you have placed here we, we, we could have draw, we could have drawn it here also before before this also okay so this is the question that how large can we make uh, the, this margin what is margin margin we have seen the largest radius of this cylinder is known as margin in three dimensional it will form a cylinder that means this nomen's land region along with the division boundary in three dimension naturally it will form a cylinder and here in two dimension you can see it will uh, create a rectangle so if it is rectangle that means this width of this rectangle how much actually large we can make okay and if it is cylinder okay how much large we can make the radius of this cylinder okay where the radius of this cylinder is known as margin so that is the question okay so uh, through this statement we want to tell this that uh, what will be the margin size actually so meaning of this question is what will be the margin size that means how large we can make these radius or how large we can make the width of this cylinder okay so that uh, um, after that after when it, it will get over that means this class boundary will get over okay no man's land will get over and we will start putting some points okay some samples of both the classes so in that way we have to think that how large we can make this margin size or how much actually will be the width of this cylinder and in case of uh, sorry width of the rectangle okay and in case of cylinder how much will be the radius what will be the value of the radius of this cylinder okay so how large we can make this margin size that is the thing that is the question so that we have to derive it now okay so this is the margin concept that means a um, rectangle that is now um, generated uh, by the snowman's land along with the division boundary its width actually we call as margin or if it is three dimension then it generates a cylinder the radius of that cylinder we call as actually 
the margin okay so this largest radius is known as the margin level by m this largest radius is known as the margin level by m so as much as possible large you have to make because the concept is as much as possible means the, the no man's land uh, in both the sides of the division boundary should be as much as possible high that is the ideal situation then what will happen in common sense that uh, most of the samples will lie very further from the division boundary so um, the misclassification uh, chance will reduce the probability of misclassifying any sample will reduce on the other hand if samples are lying closer to the boundary okay there is a chance of misclassification because that means they can belong to another side of the division boundary also because they are lying very close to the division boundary okay but if all the samples are lying very further from the division boundary common sense they have been correctly classified misclassification chance will reduce probability will reduce that is the thing so that means what i mean no man's land we have to make as much as possible high that means the space of no man's land that region we have to make as much as possible high okay so that is the actually that's why the in the in this question we are telling that um, how large we can make this margin okay or what will be the largest value of the radius the largest value of the radius is known as the margin here in case of rectangle the largest largest value of the width that we can actually make that means that is possible that is known as margin so how large we can make this margin value okay as much as possible we have to make it large if we are making the margin value large on both the sides naturally your no man's no man's land region uh, the area of the no man's land region uh, will be increasing okay because margin value uh, actually here we are showing it here this is my uh, margin value but instead of here uh, instead, instead of this much if actually margin value we can increase so this class boundary will come around this portion so as much as possible we, should, we have to make it high okay so how will decide that that what will be the largest value of the radius or what will be the largest value um, of the width in case of rectangle in case of 2d uh, that means what is the largest value of the margin okay so how much actually large we can make that means how much it is possible to make it large okay and based on that we have to decide the margin size okay so that you'll see so now we'll derive actually Uh, the margin size margin size uh, how much possible actually um, uh, how much actually it is possible to make it large as much as possible to make it large we will make it okay now the concept is actually that uh, i'm telling you the concept then we will derive it uh, we, we have to start actually from the decision boundary okay and then we have to move we have to move obviously normal distance we have to move okay towards the um uh, actually class of plus class okay and then where we are colliding and similarly we are moving in this side also towards the class of um, actually samples of this um, circle class and where we are colliding for the first time it may be possible that one side we are colliding at a time we are not colliding on both the sides okay but wherever we are colliding okay for the first time it may be this region one or it may be this region two we have to stop that is the concept actually we have to stop okay in this way we have to decide that how much actually the that means uh, how much it is possible to make the margin size large okay so uh, we have to stop at that point and then at that point we will actually construct the class boundary say uh, we are starting from the division point and we are moving the normal distance perpendicular actually normal distance means actually perpendicular okay normal means the mathematical normal i am telling not the conventional normal in the real life normal distance means perpendicular with this decision boundary so actually we will move in this way okay the direction you can uh, see here it is given here um, it is mentioned here through this arrow okay double headed arrow so we, we will not move in this way rather than we will move in this way okay that means the normal distance perpendicular from the decision boundary and in this way we will move towards the um, region of plus plus similarly towards the region of circle plus on both the sides will move and where we are colliding for the first time they are in stop they are in stop okay and at that time uh, how much amount we have um, uh, crossed in another side of the division boundary that will actually count and we will stop there also and in this way both the sides of the division boundary 
we are generating equal amount of moments lag. That means the distance that we have covered in one side, the same distance we should cover in the another side also. But in another side, it may be possible we have not collided, but we have to stop. That is the concept. And there we will draw the class boundary. Like here we have drawn plus class boundary, here we have drawn zero class boundary, circular class boundary. Here you can see, here we have collided here with one, two samples, okay, of the circle class, and that's why we have stopped. But in this side, we have not collided till because some um, plus class samples are coming further. We have not collided, but we have stopped because the equal amount of distance we have to move perpendicular distance from the decision boundary on both the sides and where we are colliding for the first time we have to stop on both the sides that is the concept so since we have collided here with some samples few samples of the cycle class we have stopped and at the same time we have stopped here also okay we have stopped here also but in this plus class region class region that means region one we have not collided at all and that means we have not collided till now with uh, any uh, sample of class class but we have stopped that means the equal distance we have to cover on both the sides uh, after starting from the decision boundary, we have to move uh, towards class uh, region 1 also and towards region 2 also. An equal distance we have to cover. Okay. And whenever we are colliding for the first time, we have to stop. And it may happen in the in the in in this in this approach, or in this way, if we move, it may happen that coincidentally, at the same time, we, are, we will collide with some samples on both the sides at, at the same time. But it is actually depends on luck. Okay. It, 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 it actually depends on the data distribution. It, it is a coincidence but if it doesn't happen also if you are colliding with one side that means uh, some sample of class one or class two that means on one side on uh, either in region one or region two we have to stop on another side also that is the concept okay so why we are doing so uh, so that we can maintain the equal distance covering on both the sides because i have mentioned repeatedly that the equal amount of moments land should be there on both the sides that's why we are telling that this margin M value should be equal on both the sides. Here also you have written M, here also you have written M. And the margin M value is equal, then only one rectangle is possible, where width will be same of the rectangle on the both the sides of the region boundary. And if it is cylinder for 3D, okay, the radius will be there. So you cannot make the radius in this side one, in this side another for the cylinder. The radius will be same, okay, on the both, that is the, you know the radius concept. So that's why uh, equal uh, amount of margin you have to take on both the sides. Okay, that's um, due to this reason. Uh, after actually moving equal amount of distance, okay, we are stopping in both the sides. But uh, it may be possible on one side we have collided, another side we have not collided. So these are concepts. Okay, now after colliding with the samples, with which samples we are colliding, those are known as support vector. So like here you can see these are support vector. These are support vector. Okay, this is one support vector of uh, circle class, this is one support vector of circle class. Okay. So, here we are getting some support vector. Okay. And here we have not collided. Here the support vector. Because here actually till now we have not collided. And there is some distance we actually needed to move. But before that we have stopped because in this side, in the circle class side, we have collided. So, that's why we have stopped in this side. So, that's why we have to stop in this plus class side also. Where the movement uh, in the plus class region also need to be stopped. That's why we have stopped. But in the plus class side, we have not collided. So in this, uh, if it is the case, then um, um, but we have to stop on both the sides and, and we have to construct the class boundary that we have constructed. So if, if it is the case, then in the plus class side, which one will be the support vector? That is the nearest one from the class boundary, not from the decision boundary, from the class boundary. Class boundary is the boundary where moments land is getting over, and decision boundary is uh, both the sides there will be moments land. Okay. And in this side, there is no problem where we have collided directly those samples are the support vectors. Okay. Now the concept is you write down one point. After once the training is over, once the training gets over, once the training phase gets over, once the training phase gets over, once the training phase gets over, we can throw, we can throw away all the all the all the samples from the data set, from the set. We can throw away all the samples. We can throw away. Okay, all the samples from the training set. We can throw away all the samples from the training set, but not the support vectors. But not the support vectors. Okay. Again, I am repeating. Once the training phase gets over, okay, once the training phase gets over, 
training training phase means training of my classifier support vector machine that is that is a one classifier so once the training phase gets over we can throw away we can throw away all the samples from the training set we can throw away all the samples from the training set but not the support vectors but not the support vectors okay but not the support vectors we can throw away all the samples from the training set but not the support vectors Okay, what is the reason behind this? Anybody can you tell? Why these are called support vectors? First of all, where we are colliding on one side, those are the support vectors. On on another side, if we have collided simultaneously, then no problem. Those are the support vectors. So that one is the support vector with which we have collided. But on another side, if we have not collided, then the nearest one from the class boundary will be the support vector. So after the training phase gets over, we can throw away all the training samples, but not the support vector. Support vector we have to keep. Okay. What is the reason behind this? And uh, due to that reason, the reason that I am asking you, if you can give the correct answer, due to that reason only, these vectors are called support vectors. That means these vectors will give us some support in the future, some sort of support in the future to correctly classify a new sample. What sort of support it is giving? That that is the reason that I am asking. Anybody can you tell? Sir, maybe uh, till which point the samples can be distributed, that can be determined from this um, support vector. Yeah, determined. Distributed now, almost correct what you have told. Distributed now, actually, you see, these are the support vectors. So in this diagram, actually, this is one diagram. Uh, this is one situation. Actually, different situations will arise. That depends on the distribution, or uh, the, that means placing of these samples of class one and class two. But as per this example, the, uh, here all the plus class samples, plus class samples are uh, present, and here all the cyclic class samples are present. Now, as per this uh, situation, uh, this is one support vector, okay, because it has collided here. We have collided here when actually um, we were actually um, that means traversing, okay, from uh, division boundary to both the sides. We have collided here for the first time, but in in this side, plus class side, we have not collided, but we have stopped because after. Uh, colliding in one side, as I have mentioned, uh, because simultaneously we are moving, perpendicular distance we are moving on both the sides of the region boundary. So on one side we are colliding means on the other side also we have to stop. And if we can do in this way, then only we can maintain the equal distance. We can maintain the equal distance on both the sides, and that is required. Okay, because uh, same amount of no man's land should be there on the both the sides, and then only. Uh, cylinder is possible or rectangle is possible because you know radius cannot be actually vary. Here one radius, here one radius is not possible because radius means cylinder radius is unique, uniform. So now here in this way we have got one support vector. Okay. So the thing is, and here this this one is the nearest one from the class boundary. Okay. Here we have constructed class boundary where we have collided uh, in this uh, circle class side. There is no problem because we have collided first time here. Mm, so directly at that point uh, we will construct a class boundary but in the plus class region we have not collided yet but we have to stop uh, since we have collided in this side so here also where we are stopping we have constructed cl um, plus class boundary so from this plus class boundary nearest one this is a support vector sb plus it is mentioned that so sb plus and the, here directly we have collided with circle class sample so this is the support vector of circle plus now the thing is if these support vectors, if we throw it, throw it away, then we cannot know in the future that what is the ideal position or ideal values. Okay, here actually two dimensions we have drawn obviously. That means this is my x1 one feature, this is the x2 another feature. Okay, we cannot draw more than two dimensions on the screen. So obviously, have two features are that x1 and x2. So what will be the ideal values of this combination of features x1 and x2 or f1 and f2? Okay, so that it will not be placed in the no man's land. And that is required because, as I mentioned, with the, uh, uh, if any sample is placed, if, if any sample is falling within the no man's land, then it is risky. Then it is risky. It may be correct classification or it may be wrong also. Because it is uh, lying within the no man's land, within the region means it is very close, close from the boundary. It is very close from the boundary. It is closer to the boundary. So there is always a chance of misclassification. But as much as possible, okay, if all the samples are going further from the decision boundary, that is better. That means they are not com coming from the, um, the, that means they are not coming, uh, they are not lying closer to the decision boundary, they are very further from the decision boundary. That means the, the chance of misclassification is almost zero. So probably it is zero, that means they have been correctly classified. So in the future, when a new test sample will come, 
So new test sample will be classified based on the support vector position. That means all the other training samples I can throw it out, but the support vectors will tell you that any new sample that will come from circle class, it is not known. It is from which class? It is a test sample just. Okay, it will be predicted by the support vector machine classifier that it is whether it is from belong to circle class or class class. But say any new test sample is coming. Okay, if if it has to be in the circle class, then its features value feature values f1 and f2 should be such that it should always come. Okay. it should always come below this region that means below this region means where the support vectors of class class a yes, circle class are present these two okay so new sample should actually lie below this region okay then obviously its uh, classification will be correct because uh, it will not lie very closer to the decision boundary because very closer to the decision boundary the vectors that are lying those are support vectors only okay so and and uh, above that there is moments man okay so new test sample if it is lying below this region below this region means below these two support vectors that means obviously it is a correct classification so it can be uh, predicted as circle class similarly if maybe it may be plus plus sample also we don't know because no leveling is there in the test set we don't place any leveling okay just we uh, give the feature vector of the test sample to the classifier and we Uh, as the classifier to predict this class level so if it is say uh, plus class sample it will be plus class sample also the, that means that test sample okay then its value should be such that okay it should lie above this support vector region that means this is the point where the support vector of plus class is present so no sample uh, should be placed okay below this position then it will lie in the no man's land so all the samples from class class okay all the test samples should lie above this portion above this portion above this point okay then what will happen obviously those samples are going further and further from the decision boundary so their classification will be correct so if any test sample um, feature values are such that they are uh, lying or they are coming above this point of the support vector plus class then it will be predicted as plus class Okay, that means the class one sample. Okay. Similarly, if the feature values of the test sample is such that it is lying, okay, below this circle class point or below this region, it will be labeled as circle class. So these support vectors will give you this uh, guidance. These support vectors will give you this guidance. So support vectors are supporting us or helping us in this. Sense. They are telling that what should be the ideal feature values of the test sample. Okay. But say if any test sample feature value is uh, actually derived, uh, that means such values have been derived so that it is lying say here, it is lying here, okay, on the class boundary, class class boundary. That means almost on the no man's land, okay, almost on the no man's land. Then actually uh, it is very risky to classify it either plus class or circle class because it is lying very closer to the decision boundary. Okay, so ideal value should be such that uh, the, um, each and every test sample should lie above this point, above this point, the support vector. Okay, so if you see in your uh, test feature vector values are not coming in such a way. Okay, so values are such that uh, one uh, the test sample is coming at, at this position, at this position. That means on the plus plus boundary. Okay, then obviously. support vector will alert you or support vector will guide you that change change your feature values change your feature values that means a mathematical method by which you have extracted the features changing okay because it is becoming very risky there may be chance of misclassification also because it is lying almost on the no man's land that means it is very closer from the decision boundary so change your feature values so this changing whether it will change the feature values or not this will be guided by the support vector support vector will tell you. because uh, because support vectors we have not thrown it out support vectors we have kept so support vectors uh, feature values you are seeing okay you can see what are the feature values f1 and f2 of the support vector of this support vector or this support vector what are those feature values so the test sample feature value should be such that okay the test sample should lie either um, above this point if it belongs to plus class and below this point okay if it belongs to circle class so in that way from the support vectors only we can get that guidance we can get that idea and accordingly we will change our feature values so that 
uh, it should not fall within the no man's land. If it falls within the no man's land, support vector machine can classify it, obviously. It is not like that it cannot classify, but there is a chance of misclassification. It is risky, risky classification. Okay, so it is always better to place the uh, test sample in, uh, in, in certain region so that it will be it will it will going further and further from the decision boundary. So it should go as much as possible further from the decision boundary. So in certain region, in uh, in that type of region, we have to place the test sample. Okay, and it is only possible to know through the uh, help of support vector. Because support vector we have not thrown it out. So support vector values we are seeing feature values because those are also some feature vector. Okay, uh, support vector means actually it is also nothing but one training sample. During training we have used, but after training we have not thrown it out. So th those are also not, nothing but like other training samples. It is a feature vector, normal feature vector. So in the in the feature vector of support vector we are seeing what are the feature values. Accordingly we will adjust our feature values so that all the test samples. Okay, should lie either above this point in the class one if, if it has to actually if it has to be predicted for class one, and if it is from class two, then it should lie below this point. Below this. Point. Okay, so then risk is almost nil. There is no risk because that means they are uh, going very further from the decision boundary. Okay, so once any sample is very closer to the decision boundary, there is already risk of misclassification. Okay, because uh, I um, I think you have seen that. Already, those three situations we have seen today. Okay, we have drawn in three different way. First one and second one is very risky because the, in first one and second one, in both the situation, linear decision boundary was touching some sample of either class one or class two. Okay, so that means there is always chance that that uh, the sample which has been touched that can actually be placed on another side of the decision boundary. Because it is almost on the decision boundary. Okay, so it is risky to tell that it is from class one or class two because it has almost touched the decision boundary. Okay, but if the samples are very further from the decision boundary, common sense. It is a totally common sense. Anybody can understand. If the samples are very further from the decision boundary, okay, we can say in 100% cases we can say it is a correct classification because it is not lying uh, on the decision boundary or very closer to decision boundary. Whereas it is lying very further from the decision boundary, but if any sample has touched almost the decision boundary, that means there is a chance it can actually fall on the either side also. Okay, on the another side also. Either side it can fall. It can uh, class one also class two. Also. Okay, so that means that those type of risky actually situation we should not take, and that is only possible to know from the support vectors. That's why after the training, other training, training samples we can throw it out, but not the support vectors. Support vectors are also present in the training sample. But other training samples we can throw. That means these training samples, all, all these are training samples that is shown here on the diagram. All are training samples. So these plus plus samples we can throw it out. All these cycle plus samples we can throw it out. But these support vector one from plus plus and these two support vectors two, two support vectors from cycle plus we cannot throw it. Out. These support vectors uh, feature values will only guide us in the future. Okay, to know that what should be the ideal values, feature values of the test samples. Okay. Accordingly, we will adjust our uh, feature extraction method, mathematical method, and so that feature values can be ad adjusted so that uh, all the test samples, okay, if it is has to be in a, um, plus plus, uh, all the test samples should lie above this point, okay, and if it is uh, has to be uh, from cycle plus, all the test samples uh, must lie, okay, below this point, below this point, below this sub point, okay. So in uh, in that in the, in that case there will be no risk, not a actually one percent risk is also there, uh, and we can say classification will be correct because they are going very further from the decision boundary. They are not lying within the no man's land, and uh, no man's land. First of all, we have uh, we have taken both the sides equal amount. That means uh, what we are doing, we are not placing any sample in the no man's land. That means we are not placing any sample closer to the decision boundary. Okay. First of all, that thing we have actually achieved, and after that, uh, we are uh, placing our test samples again. Okay, <clears throat> again, uh, plus plus decision boundary or below this cycle plus decision boundary. Okay, then obviously we can maintain the furtherness of the um, uh, test samples from the decision boundary because this plus plus decision boundary and uh, your uh, cycle plus decision boundary. They are coming after the numerous land is getting over. So they are uh, by themselves they are actually further from the main region boundary. 
and now our taste samples we are again placing on the on the top of plus cross boundary or on the below of okay circle cross boundary so that means we are maintaining this furtherness of this taste samples from the main decision boundary main decision boundary is this because before that we have placed some amount of moments here so in that way if we do then not a single sample uh, can that means we lie closer to decision boundary and there is no risk of predicting the class level by the classifier because they are going very far okay if some samples are lying very close to the decision boundary always it is a risk it is a very risky to predict this class level okay because it can lie on either side because it is very close to the decision boundary okay so this is a concept actually okay understood understood this statement then why support vectors we cannot throw it out all other training samples we can throw it out Have we understood? Yes, sir. Hmm. So support vectors we can throw it out. In this sense, they are called support vectors. That's why this machine name is like this. I mean, this is actually one classifier. Actually, classification technique. This classification technique name is like this, support vector machine. So some feature vectors are there in the training set only. Again, I am telling in the training set only. Support vectors are not coming from outside. Okay, not from anywhere else. Support vectors are also like other training samples, other feature vectors in the training set. support vectors are also lying in the training set but uh, the special vectors the feature vectors in the training set okay they will give us the support they will give us a guidance they will tell us in the future that what should be the ideal values of the test sample so that there is there will not be a 1% risk also uh, of uh, classifying it correctly okay acha now we have to derive actually what will the margin size actually we need to know okay What is the margin size? So you have to derive it. In general, we are deriving now, and accordingly, uh, for a specific different numerical, new, different numerical, uh, numerical, different problems, we have to actually use this uh, general, uh, general actually formula that will derive finally in the last equation. And using that, you have to find out the margin size. Okay. Here we have written in general m, but what will be the actual m value for any specific problem if it is given? Uh, some uh, training samples if it is given of two classes okay distributed in such a way what should be the ideal value uh, of m okay so how as much as possible we have to make it large now i think you have understood that the largest radius that i have mentioned that time the definition the largest radius of the cylinder is known as the margin that means the largest as much as possible we can make it large you have to make it large but uh, as much as possible largest means up to up to which point the point is this that once we are colliding in one side we have to stop the movement in another side also and simultaneously we are moving we have started moving uh, we have started traversing from the decision boundary simultaneously we are moving at the same time on both the sides so in one side if we are colliding we have to stop on another side also okay and in that way if we do then only we can maintain the equal distance on both the sides okay so uh, this is actually uh, the, the criteria to decide that what will be the largest Uh, value of the margin, or what will be the largest value of the radius in case of cylinder, and in case of rectangle, what is the largest value of this wheel? Okay, that means uh, until unless we are not colliding, we should keep on moving. We should keep on moving. Okay, and once we are actually colliding on one side, and if we are colliding at the same time on another side also, there is no problem. That is coincidence. Then it is very good. We will stop on both the sides, but. Once we are colliding on one side and another side, we might not have collided till now, but we have to stop on another side also. And that is the largest possible margin size or margin. Value. Okay. Now we have to derive it. So I am telling you, you write down how to derive it. Okay. Write down in this way. Give the give give one subheading. Give one give one subheading. How to derive? How to derive the margin size? How to derive the margin size or margin value? how to derive the margin size or margin value how to derive the margin size or margin value okay give this subheading then right we will see the derivation how to derive the margin size or margin value right down. the process i am telling you write down for a given margin value m capital m okay it is shown on the screen capital m that is the margin on both the sides for a given margin value capital m for a given margin value capital m we can say that any point capital x any point capital x any capital x any point means one feature vector okay 
several times we have uh, seen this notation earlier capital x means one feature vector we are denoting by uh, capital x and capital x means multivariate that means multiple features are there f1 f2 f3 in this way okay here only two features because two dimension we have drawn so f1 and f2 so f1 and f2 making the capital x okay here it is uh, we are telling point because it is actually looking like a point because we are plotting it on a graph that's why looking like a point but basically physically it is a feature vector it is one telling sample okay so for a given margin value capital m we can say that any point capital x any point capital x where w transpose where w transpose x plus b okay where b b plus w transpose x this one where b plus w transpose x where b plus w transpose x b plus w transpose x okay so that is nothing but the same equation we are using that we have used in artificial neural network that macaulay pitts model that uh, weighted sum and one is bias b for bias here actually and uh, same equation we have used in linear displacement function also one is bias okay w0 and then w transpose x same same equation we are using it here okay there is actually no difference in using that equation same equation we use actually in support vector machine or artificial neural network or in your that uh, linear displacement function okay but the actually main difference here uh, between svm and uh, artificial neural network is that here kernel concept is there that is the heart of svm kernel kernel function that is not present in artificial neural network or linear displacement function or base class even and using that kernel function we will see in the next class using that kernel function we can um, actually transform the um, current distribution of the data set in such a way that higher dimensional data set will be generated so the linear decision boundary will be possible uh, but initially say linear decision boundary is not possible and then unless we are converting it into higher dimension using kernel function then non linear decision boundary have to do but non linear decision boundary also we can draw but we can draw but non linear decision boundary drawing is actually more expensive more expensive always it is critical more expensive more expensive in the sense that uh, time consuming okay it will take much more time and it is actually very complicated to construct the, uh, your non linear decision boundary and another thing for a particular training set actually non linear decision boundary i think i have shown you earlier also in the initial classes okay i will show you again in the next class for a particular training set actually to, to adapt with the training set we can make one linear non linear decision boundary okay because since linear decision boundary not possible uh, to tackle it we are drawing one non linear decision boundary by considering only that data set Training set, but sir, but for some new training set, that non-linear decision boundary will not work. Okay, I think I have shown you in the initial class. Okay, if you if you are not understanding it, I, I will show you in the next class. Okay, when we will actually see this kernel function using which actually we can uh, convert it into higher dimension so that instead of non-linear decision boundary, linear decision boundary can be done. Okay, so always our target should be to construct the linear decision boundary always. Non-linear decision boundary we can construct, but it is actually we cannot say it is it is not invariant. It is not invariant uh, to training set. It is actually related with some specific training set. For uh, other training sets, that same non-linear decision boundary may not work. Okay, so it, that's why it is expensive. It is complicated to draw, and uh, most of the cases uh, actually it will not be correct because for other training set it will not be actually uh, correct. Okay, and uh, training set actually always we can change. Yeah, I have mentioned earlier also some new training samples uh, incrementally actually we keep on uh, uh, including in the existing training set because sometimes we see that in the samples that I have collected initially I have not covered all the popul entire population. So uh, next after say few days I, I am including some new more some few more training samples in the training set. So generally training set incrementally we keep on changing. And in that case, uh, your uh, the non-linear decision boundary that you have drawn earlier, it, it will not work because keeping in mind that uh, the current samples you have drawn the non-linear decision boundary. Okay, okay. So non-linear decision boundary is not desirable. Always you have to make it linear decision boundary, and that's why uh, using kernel function you can do it. Uh, using uh, that means uh, MLP, if it is not possible that uh, those uh, training samples are not linearly separable, then MLP cannot work. MLP will fail there. That is the problem in the middle. Okay. Okay. So where the B plus W transpose X greater than equal to capital M, greater than equal to capital M, greater than equal to capital M is a which plus sample? Can you tell this feature vector capital X where B plus W transpose X greater than equal to capital M? 
These are plus class sample or cycle class sample. Which one? Plus class sample. Plus class sample, right. You see W transpose X plus B. W transpose X plus B. Okay. W transpose X plus B. Here, Y is equal to W transpose X plus B. This is the equation here. That means here, the B plus W transpose X will be zero. Because we have seen earlier in the linear discrete function also, if the Y value is zero, Y value zero means B plus W transpose X. If this value is zero, the sample, that means the feature vector capital X will lie exactly on the decision boundary. We have seen, okay, earlier in the linear discrete function. If the equation value is zero. Whereas if it is greater than zero, it will lie on one side. If it is greater than, less than zero, it will lie in this side. But here, only greater than zero, lesser than zero, you cannot do because here we have placed no man's land on both the side. And we have taken some amount of no man's land, equal amount of no man's land on both the side. And that we are denoting by the margin size m. Okay. So here, within the no man's land, we have not placed any sample. So here, if b plus w transpose x is greater than zero, you cannot say that will belong to plus plus because greater than zero means above this decision boundary. But above the decision boundary, some no man's land is also there. So within the no man's land, we have not placed any sample, remember, okay? So here, B plus W transpose X greater than zero, lesser than zero will not work. Here, B plus W transpose X is equal to zero, that is in the decision boundary. And, and, and if it is greater than, greater than M, greater than M, okay? Greater than M, then it will be placed actually in the plus plus region. And if it is lesser than, Lesser than here minus m, lesser than minus m because this side is m, this side is m, this side is minus m actually. Okay, equal amount we have taken both the side that that's why we have written m. But if this side is m, this side is minus m. So if it is lesser than minus m, it will be placed in the circular plus region. Okay, and if it is equal to m, then it is a support vector of plus plus. If it is equal to minus m, it will be support vector of circular plus. Okay, understood, son? Me, bolo, son me. Clear? Okay. Hmm. B plus W transpose X. So write down where W B plus W transpose X is greater than M. Greater than M. Is a plus plus sample. Is a plus plus sample. And any point, any point where B plus W transpose X lesser than minus M. Lesser than minus M. That means this side. Okay. Don't be confused. In M and minus M we are telling. Because both are having equal magnitude. Magnitude is M. Value is equal, but sign obviously in this side plus in this side minus. So when we are we are moving from the region boundary towards this uh, region two, circle plus sample, obviously we are going to negative side. But amount is equal. That means moment's land size is actually equal. Okay, that means this margin size is equal. That is m. But this side plus m, this side minus m. Okay. So if it is lesser than equal to m, that means it is lying on the class boundary of circle plus. That means it is a support vector. Okay. But ideally it should be Below the support vector region, any test sample. So it should be lesser than minus m. Lesser than minus m means it will come below the support vector region of circular plus. Okay. So again, I am telling for a given margin value capital M, we can say that any point capital X where W transpose X and B plus W transpose X greater than equal to capital greater than M, not equal to sorry, greater than capital M, greater than capital M is a plus plus sample. And any point, any point where B plus W transpose X lesser than minus M, okay, lesser than minus M, lesser than minus M, this one lesser than minus M. Here equal to is given. Remove it. Don't give equal to. By mistake is given. Lesser than minus M, okay, lesser than minus M, lesser than minus M is a circular plus M. Is a circular plus M. And if, and if for any any point capital X. And and the for any point capital X, B plus W transpose X greater than equal to M, greater than equal to M. Okay, and the for any point capital X, point means suppose uh, yeah, here your feature vector capital X. Okay, and the for any point capital X, B plus W transpose X is greater than equal to M. Sorry, not greater than B plus W transpose X is equal to M, equal to M, exactly equal to M, exactly equal to M. Okay. E B plus W transpose X is equal to M. It is a support vector. It is a support vector of plus plus. It is a support vector of plus plus. Okay. It is a support vector of plus plus. And if B plus W transpose X is equal to minus M, is equal to minus M, 
is equal to minus m. It is a support vector of cyclotrons. It is a support vector of cyclotrons. Okay, that means these two support vectors. Okay, here b plus w transpose x is equal to minus m. Okay, so here greater than zero, lesser than zero only will not work. It is not like linear displacement function or artificial linear network. Here some no man's land is there. So that no man's land margin you have to consider here. So that is m. So if b plus w transpose x is equal to m. Okay, exactly. It is lying on this plus class boundary. That is the support vector of plus class. And b plus w transpose x, if it is equal to minus m, exactly equal to minus m, it is lying on this circle class boundary. That means it is a support vector of circle class. Okay. And whereas b plus w transpose x is greater than m, okay, that means in this region, anywhere in this region, it is lying. That is exactly the ideal situation. It should be. That is a plus class sample. And b plus w transpose x is lesser than minus m. That means anywhere in this region it is lying. Okay, that is ideal situation. It should be okay, and it is the sample from circle. Okay, okay. And on the division boundary, on the division, this is the main division boundary. Okay, these two are not division boundary. Remember, this is the plus class boundary. This is the circle class boundary. That means these two boundaries are telling where no man's land on both the sides getting over. But main division boundary is this thing. Okay, you can see from the arrow I have mentioned main division boundary. So on the division boundary, if any sample Plus x is lying. Its equation will be b plus w transpose x is equal to zero naturally. That means y is equal to zero. Okay, as usual. Now write down. Okay. So the actual actual separating actual separating division boundary is specified by w uh, w transpose x plus b is equal to zero. As I mentioned, you can note it down. The actual separating division boundary. The actual separating division boundary. The actual separating division boundary, okay. That means this is main division boundary. This one indicated by this arrow. The actual separating division boundary is specified by b plus w transpose x is equal to zero. B plus w transpose x is equal to zero. So as I mentioned, okay. Now suppose that we pick a point. We pick a point from plus class. Now suppose that we pick a point from plus class. Now suppose that we pick a point from plus class that lies on the plus class boundary. That lies on the plus class boundary. That lies on the plus class boundary. That means this. Okay, this plus class boundary here. That lies on the plus class boundary. Okay, plus class boundary. So, so that W transpose X. B plus W transpose X, as I mentioned earlier, again we write it so that B plus W transpose X, so that B plus W transpose X is equal to, क्या होगा? Is equal to, बोलो, so that B plus W transpose X is equal to M, M, right? Okay. If any point plus X, feature vector plus X, sample plus X is lying on this plus class boundary here, okay? Its equation will be B plus W transpose X is equal to M. Okay, this is a support vector. Write down this is a support vector. This is a support vector. This is a support vector. We have actually discussed it earlier, but here in the derivation also mentioning this is a support vector. Now, if we want to find the closest point, write down. If we want to find the closest point, if we want to find the closest point, if we want to find the closest point that lies on the boundary. That lies on the boundary line for the circle class. If we want to find the closest point that lies, that lies on the boundary line for the circle class, on the boundary line for the circle class. That means this boundary. Remember this boundary, this boundary. Okay, not the division boundary. We are telling boundary line for the circle class. That means this one, this boundary. Okay. If we want to find, if we want to find the closest point that lies on the boundary line for the cycle class, okay, boundary line for the cycle class means cycle class boundary. This one, okay, not division boundary. Remember, don't get confused. Okay, if we want to find the closest point that lies on the boundary line for the cycle class, then we travel perpendicular. Okay, as I was mentioning earlier, we have to always here travel. We have to traverse perpendicular, perpendicular from the division boundary. Okay, always. That means the normal distance you have to find it out, like we have seen earlier. Okay, the normal mathematical normal. That distance actually you have to consider here. So right now, then we travel, then we travel perpendicular to the plus boundary line. 
then we travel perpendicular to the plus boundary line until we hit the circle boundary line then we travel perpendicular to the plus boundary line we travel perpendicular to the plus boundary line until we hit the circle boundary line okay that means we are traveling in this way, perpendicular the in, in this way, the way arrow is given perpendicular perpendicular from this plus boundary line plus boundary line be this one okay indicated by this i have indicated it by this red color okay this plus boundary line from here perpendicular we have to move okay the way actually we have to move and uh, according to this arrow has been given perpendicular from this plus boundary line we have to move and up to which point we have to move until we are hitting the circle boundary line circle boundary line is this one okay so from from here to here we have to move but perpendicular we have to move perpendicular to this plus boundary line remember okay so then we travel perpendicular through to the plus boundary line until we hit the circle boundary line okay push to the point that we hit is the closest point the point that we hit is the closest point the point that we hit is the closest point okay and we will call it we will call it we will call it the support vector of circle plus support vector of circle plus the point that we hit is the closest point and we will call it the support vector of circle plus the point that we hit is the closest point and we will call it the support vector of circle plus okay the point that we hit is the closest point and we will call it the support vector of circle plus now the question is how far did we did we have to travel in this direction okay the question is how far did we have to travel did we have to travel or how far we have already traveled how far we have already traveled in this direction so from this figure i think you can understand that this figure will actually make it clear that the distance we traveled is m right down from this figure from this figure from this figure it is clear that the distance we traveled is m capital m the distance we traveled is m remember it is it is normal distance mathematical normal distance not not our conventional uh, distance concept that we use okay because we are moving always perpendicular from the um, perpendicular to the decision boundary perpendicular to the plus plus boundary line everything okay so from this figure the uh, from this figure it is clear that the distance we traveled is capital m is capital m to get to the decision boundary to get to the decision boundary because we have we have started from the plus plus boundary so we we have uh, covered distance m okay normal distance m and then we are hitting or we are reaching to the main decision boundary here okay so the distance distance we we travel this capital m the distance we travel this capital m to get to the to get to the decision boundary to get to the decision boundary and then another capital m another capital m another capital m from there okay that means we have reached the decision boundary at this one main decision boundary from there again okay perpendicular to the decision boundary always movement will be perpendicular first of all perpendicular to the plus plus boundary then we are reaching up to, we are traveling m distance we are reaching to the decision boundary then from this point again another m distance okay that is also movement must be perpendicular to the decision boundary and then we will reach to the circle plus boundary okay so we travel the distance we travel is capital m to get to the decision boundary and then another m another m another capital m from there from there from there okay to the opposing support vector to the opposing support vector opposing support vector means opposite class support vector that means yes circle class okay and then another capital m another capital m from there that means from the decision boundary to the opposing support vector to the opposing support vector to the opposing support vector opposing support vector means opposite class support vector here opposite class means my circle class one is plus class is opposite class that is a circle class because in opposite side it is coming on one side plus class of the samples are coming and on another side circle class of the samples are coming so in the opposite side okay of the decision boundary in which side plus class samples are there in the opposite side of the decision boundary all the circle class samples are coming that's why to the opposing support vector means actually circle class support vector okay
picture. Write down. We can use this fact. We can use this fact to write down the margin search capital M. We can use this fact to write down the margin search capital M. We can use this fact to write down the margin search capital M. We can use this fact to write down the margin search capital M in terms of capital W. Capital W is a vector. Okay. In terms of capital W, here it is circled here on the screen. You can see capital W a vector. In terms of capital W. Okay. If we can remember, if we can remember, if we can remember, as we have already seen earlier, that the weight vector capital W is always perpendicular to the classifier line. Weight vector capital W is always perpendicular to the classifier line. That is the decision boundary. Okay. If we can remember one fact that we have seen earlier, okay, we have discussed it using linear displacement function. If you can recall, so if we remember one extra fact. That we have seen earlier, that the weight vector capital W, that the weight vector capital W is always perpendicular to the classifier line. Weight vector capital W is always perpendicular to the classifier line. Classifier line means decision boundary. Okay, like the decision boundary, if there is confusion, because here one plus plus boundary and circle plus boundary is also there. So here classifier line means the decision boundary. Okay. Weight vector capital W, weight vector capital W is always perpendicular. To the classifier line. Classifier line means in the bracket you mentioned decision boundary. Decision boundary. Weight vector capital W is always perpendicular to the classifier line. That is the decision boundary. Okay. So if you can remember this uh, one, this fact that we have seen earlier. Okay. That weight vector capital W is perpendicular to the classifier line. Achha. If it is perpendicular to the decision boundary, if it is perpendicular to the decision boundary, if it is perpendicular to the decision boundary. Then it is obviously perpendicular to the plus and circle plus boundary lines too. I think you can understand. If it is perpendicular, if the weight vector capital W is perpendicular to, to the decision boundary, to the decision boundary, then it is obviously perpendicular. Then it is obviously perpendicular to the plus and circle boundary lines too. Okay. If the weight vector capital W is perpendicular to, to the decision boundary boundary, then it is obviously perpendicular. To the boundary lines of plus and circle plus two. Okay, that means uh, the weight vector capital W will be perpendicular to this plus plus boundary line also as well as to the circle plus boundary line also because these two lines are parallel to the main decision boundary. Okay, so if the weight vector capital W is perpendicular to the classifier line or decision boundary, then obviously it is perpendicular to the plus and circle plus boundary lines too. That means these two boundary lines, plus plus boundary and circle plus boundary. Okay. So the direction we traveled. So the direction we traveled. So the direction we traveled from support vector plus plus to support vector of circle plus is along W. So the distance we traveled. Uh, so the direction we traveled. So the direction we traveled. So the direction we traveled from support vector of plus plus to support vector of circle plus. Okay, so the direction we travel from support vector of plus plus to support vector of circle plus is along W. Is along W. Is along W. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So the direction we travel from support vector of plus plus support vector you can write in short S V S V for support vector S V S V from plus plus to S V of circle plus is along W. Full stop. Now we need to make capital W a unit vector. Now we need to make capital W a unit vector. Now we need to make capital W a unit vector. Unit vector. That is capital W. This one, okay? Unit vector. Capital W divided by divided by norm of W. Capital W divided by norm of W. Capital W divided by norm of W. We need to make capital W a unit vector. Now we need to make capital W unit vector. That is this capital W divided by norm of W. And so we see that the margin is. So we see that see that the margin is. And so we see that the margin is one by the norm of W. So we see that the margin is one by the norm of W. So we see the margin is 
1 by the norm of w. Okay, this one. This uh, in this side, left hand side on the screen, it is visible. Margin m is equal to margin m is equal to 1 by norm of w. 1 by norm of w. Okay. So this is the margin side. Okay, so in this way we are deriving. So margin side. Now we can conclude. So margin size m will be is equal to 1 by norm of your wave vector w. Okay. So in this way, in general, actually we are deriving the margin size. So what will be the margin size? That is how much large actually we make it. That means how much it is possible to make it large, the margin value. Or we can say the radius value of the cylinder or the width of the rectangle. That means the no man's land area, how much it is possible to make it large. Okay. That is nothing but 1 by norm of w. That is the margin size. So the same amount, 1 by norm of w, will be there on both the sides of the division boundary. Okay. On plus class side also m and uh, circle class side, side uh, in the circle class side also m. So this much amount no man's land must be there. Okay, this much amount no man's land must be there on both the sides of the division boundary. This much amount means which amount this m is equal to 1 by norm of w. So this is the margin size. In this way we are deriving. Okay, so some problems will be there. Okay, I will give you in the assignment. Some problems you will see that uh, different uh, samples of uh, two different classes are plotted and they are placed in the proper place, okay, in the training set and accordingly you have to plot this type of graph and then you have to find out the margin size. What will be the margin size? That means how much no man's land we can place equal amount, equal amount, always remember. No man's land in both the side must be of equal amount, okay, on one side uh, more, another side less, it should not be the case. Equal amount of no man's land on both the side. That means what is the margin size? Only only from margin size we can actually uh, quantify. We can quantify the uh, how much amount of no man's land is present on both the sides. So margin size we have to find it out. That is the main thing. Okay. So using this uh, formula one by norm of W we can find out the margin size. Okay. So these those problems we have to solve. Now how we find out the weight vector? Weight vector how to find it out? Already we have seen. Okay. Uh, those uh, uh, algorithms we use already now we have learned so those assignments actually I have not given during linear discipline function because we have from intuition we have assumed some uh, weightages values w0, w1, w2 but after that we have seen that uh, the DM descent learning algorithm okay using that algorithm we can find out the optimal weightages values for w0, w1, w2, wg all this okay so now those types of problems I will give you in the assignment the second assignment for the linear discipline function also as well as for support vector machine also using that uh, particular algorithm you have to find out the weight vector value okay capital w and once you can find out the weight vector value then easily you can find out the margin side in this way by one by norm of w that is the margin side okay so this is much for today in the next class we will see that constant optimization problem first of all we will see in svm what is the constant optimization problem from this actually margin uh, size derivation concept that we have seen from this concept it will arise that constant optimization problem and then we will see the kernel function that is the main thing of SVM that is the heart of SVM that's why SVM has become so much popular okay mm, that is one of the main factor another factor that I have told training time is too less okay due to these two factors SVM has become very, very popular in the 90s okay so that kernel uh, concept kernel mathematical different types of kernel mathematical functions we will see in the next class okay so this much for today and is there any question do you have any question on this discussion of svm garima Understood? Yes, sir. Okay. <sighs> okay. Then you can stop here. Okay. Thank you.